Okay, hi guys. So let's see more examples on the calculation of n factor for displacement and precipitation reaction. With starting off with this example, we have aluminum oxide reacting with Fe2O3, producing H2O, and then we have O. Oh, uh, no, not H2O, V2O5, and then we have FeO also. Okay, so the n factor again the oxidation state of is not changing for any of the elements, but uh, you can see that or rather so I think uh, I made a wrong statement here. If we calculate the oxidation state of V or vanadium in this case it is plus 2 and in this case it would be plus 5 hence number of moles of electron exchange is 3 divided by a coefficient of VO which would be 3 so n factor in this case would be 3 and in this case again it is changing from plus 3 to plus 2 so n factor here would be 2 let's see another example where we have Oh, by the way, before before going into the next example, let's let's discuss more points on S two C two O four. If we treat it as an acid, then n factor can be one or two, which is max. Okay, and. If H2CO4 is considered as reducing agent, then n factor would be two. Okay. So H2CO4 combining with oxidizing agent forms CO2. So the n factor would be two here. Why? So C2O4 two minus is the ion. So let's say oxidation state of carbon in this case is x plus 4 times minus 2 equals to minus 2 so 2x equals to minus 2 plus 8 so x would be equal to 3 so converting from plus 3 to plus 4 2 moles of carbon hence sign factor would be 2 here okay when it uh, so when it as it is uh, acting with oxidizing agent this would be acting as a reducing agent hence we wrote the point above okay next let us see some more notes that when NaH C2O4 is used then n factor of this compound either as acid or as base used would be 1 okay and in redox reactions what what will happen is so the nature of c2 uh, nah c2o4 in case of redox would be if we have nah c2o4 converting into co2 so here the it is going from plus 3 state to plus 4 state hence n factor in this case would be 2 okay now we are seeing some of the examples or reactions of c2 h2c2o4 with let's say we have 3 moles of k2 c2o4 dot 8 h2 this will give us 8 moles of carbon dioxide okay so here it is being used as so let's say this is this is the reaction so we need to calculate the n factor here so n factor in this case of So if you if you just look at it closely that 
then you will see that it both the C2 in plus 3 state are going in plus 4 state here okay so in this case n factor would be so 2 moles of C2 or 2 moles of carbon from H2C2O4 in plus 3 are going into plus 4 and 6 moles from here are going from plus 3 to plus 4 so total moles of uh, number of moles of electrons would be 2 from H2C2O4 and 6 from this compound hence total moles of electrons consumed in the reaction would be 8 okay and total in the in the, in the overall reaction the n factor would be so n factor would be here number of moles of electrons consumed about stuck uh, divided by stoichiometric coefficient which is, which would be 1 number of moles of electrons involved divided by stoichiometric coefficient which would be 3 so 8 by 3 here and 8 by 1 here would be the n factors okay let's see another example in which we again see a disproportionation reaction in which mn is going from mn 2 moles of mn are going from 1 in mn plus 7 only so this is not a disproportionation reaction this is a uh, example of a general reaction so one of one mole of mn is going from 7 to 7 and uh, is unchanged rather and another is going from plus 7 to plus 2 okay so we can write here that only one mole of mn changed oxidation state from plus 7 to plus 2 okay so this would be number of moles of electrons would be rather consumed would be 5 and number of moles of or other the stoichiometric coefficient would be 2 hence n factor would be 5 over 2 okay so before 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 ending this lecture i'll just like to talk a little bit about our topic of the next lecture which would be titration okay so just having a look at titration here so we have markings on the beaker as well okay and drops are coming out from this beaker and this is another solution okay so suppose this is the standard solution of a or rather b you can can name it anything standard solution of let's say we are taking b so this is a known concentration okay and this is a solution of a okay so substance a completely reacted with substance b so this point is the equilibrium point and at this point as we have already discussed before also that number of equivalents of a would be equal to number of equivalents of b okay so i hope you remember that number of equivalents is normality multiplied by volume or in other words it is derived from the fact that we know that normality is equals to number of equivalents of a substance divided by volume of solution okay so number of equivalents of a would be we know the concentration of v1 here it is known 
okay and we also know that how much volume of b we are actually dropping into the beaker okay so in in this case we also know the cons uh, the volume of b which is reacting with volume of a at equilibrium point okay so we can just write that at equilibrium point number of equivalents of a would be equal to number of equivalents of b okay so we can write it like n1 v1 should be equal to n2 v2 and obviously v1 and v2 can be in liter so i'm not writing it here but so in the next lecture we'll be seeing more on titration and we'll be continuing on with some examples and some terms used in the titration chapter so till then good luck and good bye